Hello and welcome everyone back to another fabulous Monday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening so far. Uh, we are kicking off our third and final publishing stream for February. And today we're going to be talking about hybrid publishing versus vanity publishing. There is nothing that chaps people's khakis more than getting screwed by a scam. And that is one of the things that we want to make sure here at Manuscripts we help you avoid, which is getting scammed. And I'm excited about this because we're going to be talking with uh, Brian Bees, who's the head of New Degree Press, a hybrid publisher. And we're going to be bringing him on to ask him some questions about what he has seen as just as he's going through leading manuscripts um, over the course of the last uh, three or four years. So we're very excited about that. If you guys haven't caught up on everything that we've been doing, uh, go and check out our traditional publishing versus self-publishing and crowdfunding streams um, from prior weeks. Lots and lots of really, really good information on both of those. And if you haven't already, make sure to go down, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. So that way you guys get updated when we go live and post all of the fabulous videos that we have for you. Now then, let's go ahead and bring on the bees. Hello, Brian. Hello, Steven. I'm glad to be on here tonight. Yes, super excited to have you. So um, to kind of start off with before we dive into the questions that I have for you, why don't you go ahead and take a moment and introduce yourself so that way everybody gets to know who you are. Well, thank you for giving me the space and the platform here tonight, Stephen. Uh, for those of you who don't know me or for those of you who do, um, I will uh, quickly introduce myself here. So I'm Brian Bees um, and I'm the head of publishing at New Degree Press. My goal and really my role as head of publishing has been to help build and, and create um, and develop the publishing company of New Degree Press. Um, and so in my role over the past five years, kind of wild to think that it's been that long, um, we have helped over 1,200 authors publish their books, 30 of whom in the past year were National Book Award winners or finalists. Um, and sort of most recently, we were ranked on the Inc. 5000 list, um, 293 on the list this past year, um, and number five of all education companies based in the U.S. Um, and something that most people don't, don't know about New Degree Press, but I'm really proud of, is the fact that we operate as a public benefit corporation or B Corp, which means that we prioritize um, and, 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 and optimize for public benefit over profit. And so that for us, what that really means as a book publishing company is that we really place a lot of emphasis, support around community building and helping champion authors of diverse backgrounds and identities and helping empower creators to publish their work. Um, and so in terms of that, we've done some really cool things that I'm excited to talk about, but really, um, you know, in, in the world of hybrid publishing, we have a very different model of hybrid publishing than, than most people are accustomed to when they think about um, hybrid versus vanity versus traditional, all of this. And so I'm excited to have this conversation here because um, I think it'll shed some really interesting light about the publishing industry at large and how people look at it. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and as we've kind of talked about this over the last few weeks, you know, traditional publishing is kind of the gold standard that and it's been that way for a very long time. And then came, it came along with self-publishing because everybody wanted to actually own their work. And yeah. then as far as the the hybrid publishing model goes that's still relatively new and even a lot of the the big five publishers are now bringing on that model albeit in not necessarily the best of ways but the the the, the publishing industry is recognizing hybrid publishing more than it has um and i i love the um the hybrid publishing model you know because it, it includes at least as far as New Degree Press goes, the crowdfunding, which we talked about last week um, with Vincent and I. So lots of really good stuff. Uh, but to kind of start us off here, I know the uh, one of the big ones that as an author, I looked up a ton when, you know, when I was younger and over the course of the years is 
what is a vanity press? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's it's like the the car salesman of publishing is what most people equate it out to. But what have what have you seen as far as vanity publishers go? Like the legitimate ones. Yeah, so so I I I, I, I think you talked about it r- real briefly right there. Sort of the, the there, there's sort of a car salesman, and then there's sort of legitimate um, vanity. And I think it, it's worth taking a step back on like what actually is a vanity press, and 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 really sort of understand that there 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 are different ways in which we talk about publishing and how books are published. Um, and the word vanity can really mean two different things. It can mean the world of scamming. It can mean the world of just, you know, a, you know abusive publishing relationships. But then there's also the world of, of, of vanity publishing where, you know, there are legitimate companies out there that have a goal and can be the right house or the right team or the right company, um, depending on your goals and your aspirations for your book. And so taking a step back, before anyone, before you decide to publish a book, it, it, it's really important that you actually look internally and introspectively and really reflect and discern for yourself what exactly are your goals as an author. Are your goals to sell tens of millions of copies? Is it to pursue the art form of writing? Is it to land a job? What exactly is your goal? Because that'll really help influence you in the decision that you make of which publishing route to take. But as in this conversation of what is a vanity press, there are really two kinds of vanity uh, presses out there. There is the world of scamming, and then there's the world of legitimate publishing. Um, the world of scamming, everybody knows, it's, you know, you pay thousands of dollars, and you know they they upsell you on marketing services and all of these different things, and it's really meant to be a way to extract as much value from you as the author and target customer of the business. And that's really when people think of vanity, you know, publishing and vanity presses, a lot of what they think about. They think about the scamming and 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 really, really sort of the unethical behaviors that 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 we see running rampant in the publishing industry. And that's not good at all. And that that you 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 should be very careful and, and skeptical of a publishing company. Um, that has behaviors or tendencies in that. Then you have legitimate publishing companies, which are, which can be a vanity press. And you know, one example that I like to think about is actually 48 Hour Books. 48 Hour Books is a really great example of a vanity press. Um, great company, interesting model, um, where they will help you produce a book in 48 hours. And I actually have a good family friend who. You know, a few years back, um, before his mom passed, she wrote a memoir um, style book written as, you know, a steamy genre fiction romance novel. Um, and she wanted to publish the book. And so he went to 40 Hour Books and, you know, other people will go to other vanity presses as well to just publish this book for his mother and, and, and his family to say that his mom published a book. And so there are legitimate publishing companies out there where, you know, if your goal is to write a book for your family or to, you know, publish a local history project or oral history, um, things like that, those companies do exist. And usually they have a more local hometown, small town vibe feel um, in terms of focus and, and, and in terms of the works that they usually publish. And those companies are legitimate and they will, they are great publishing partners because their goal is to help those kinds of authors publish their books for personal needs and personal purposes. And so there are, you know, perfectly legitimate vanity presses that do exist, but their goals are very different than what we think of like scam publishing and vanity publishing in that sense of it right there. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and yeah, like, you know, um, I remember, uh, gosh, this was a couple of years back now I did a, interview with uh, Shonda Elaine, who's the head developmental editor um, for New Degree Press. And it was interesting talking with her because she mentioned Vanity Press and that same exact thing of it's for like smaller scale stuff, like to say that you published a book, you know, maybe it's a gift for your family members, but it's not necessarily something that you're going to want to try and sell to everybody. It's more of a personal project of yours 
um, that you would like to see. And I like the the differentiator between, you know, there's the the Vanity Press, but they're mostly local, it, it, dealing, you know, with the kind of local histories, you know, or things like that, or something like Forty Eight Hour Books, you know, where they where they turn it around. Um, I think that's cool, and that kind of leads into you know my next question is what uh, what are some of the key identifiers of a vanity press scam? Because, you know, like it would be for me, I wouldn't know right off, yeah. right off hand. They're, they're asking me like, Hey, I'm, we're going to do all this stuff for you. We're going to publish your book. You know, now hand us like $15,000, <laughs> you know? So yeah. what are, what are some of the big things that, and little things too, that authors can yeah. look for, when they're looking for something like a vanity press so that way they don't get taken advantage of. Yeah. So I, 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 I think you hit the nail right on, right on the head right there in terms of like, you know, I, I'm, I'm publishing a small little project and all of a sudden it, you know, it cost me $15,000 out of pocket to do this one. That's a really big differentiating factor between sort of a legitimate publishing company um, and, 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 and a vanity, you know, scam um is is how do the economics work it, it's it's really important when you're looking at a publishing company eat honestly i use the example 40 hour books but also like as you as an author publishing a book for your own goals and your interests for you you may feel like 40 hour books or another company might not be the right fit um because of the economics that doesn't necessarily mean that it is an inherent scam because the economics don't align to what you personally can do but usually when you look at a vanity scam, um, economics are a really big red flag that you should be concerned about and that you will see pretty quickly. Usually a vanity scam will charge you a reading fee where they'll say like before, you know, we'll even consider whether or not to publish your book, you, you need to pay us to read your book to then make a decision. And so you should pay attention to if a publisher or a publishing company has a reading fee like that, um, that that might be a concern area for you. And that end, every stage of the journey, there are economic flags of some kind. And so, you know, looking at it, you may approach a company and they may want to publish your book. And all of a sudden, what, you know, they have quoted on their website or, or they may reference an info packet or other, you know, marketing promotional material as one price, they may quickly, very, um, actually very quickly, will begin to upsell you on all these different marketing packages and things that you absolutely have to do in order to successfully publish your book. And they'll say like, you have to spend $2,000 here, $1,500 there, $500, you know, this, that, the other thing. Um, and it'll quickly balloon in the costs of what you, of, 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 of what the expectation should be. And so going into it, you know, maybe the actual investment of your book should be a 10 to 15 to $20,000 investment, but you should go into that knowing what you want to do and what your goals are and align that budget and, and the financial economics accordingly. And if, they begin to really push you on, you need to be spending $15,000, $30,000, or whatever that number or price tag is, you should be skeptical of that and take a real close look at the numbers and how it all works. And is there a clear return on investment for your book? It's perfectly okay to spend $30,000 or $3,000 on your book or $300 on your book, but you need to know how that money is being spent where it's going and that all of the money that is spent will deliver a clear ROI investment um, and, and return for you. Um, and sort of like the other big thing here is you're, is you're thinking about, you know, the difference between scam and legitimate publishers um, is also how as, as a company, as a team, how exactly are they leveling up the quality of your production? As a publisher, right. are they providing expertise and insight and editorial feedback? Are they investing in copy editing, in proofreading, in the actual production elements of producing a high quality book? Um, or are they, you know, sort of rubber stamping a seal of approval and saying this book is ready, it's so great, it's going to sell tens of millions of copies? 
I'm using hyperbolic, you know, you know, language here um, to make a point because that's the types of things that you'll hear. Right. Um, really, there should be a clear dollars to donuts production value quality that you're getting out of it, whether it be in terms of editing, cover design, book production, marketing, sort of all those different things. And so it's about the ROI, it's about the production quality and the support that you're getting through your journey as an author. Um, and the third big thing is really looking at, you know, how exactly, what is their acceptance criteria? Do they accept every yeah. book? Do they accept a limited number of books? And to that end, there's the, the, there's a thoughtfulness that goes into how our books reviewed, edited, and then, you know, produced and published. You know, there may be, you know, usually for vanity scams, it's a hundred percent acceptance rate. It's usually dramatically high. It's, it, it's clearly too good to be true. Um, it's, it's that type of thing that you'll see. Usually, if it, you know, if it's a legitimate publisher, their acceptance rate may be closer to fifty or sixty percent, or maybe twenty to thirty percent. Um, you know, usually in traditional publishing, that's where you get into you know, you know, one to five percent acceptance rate, um, where the acceptance rates are incredibly low. But legitimate publishers can still have a you know higher acceptance rate than traditional publishing. It's just a very stark contrast to vanity right. scams where they'll take on anything regardless of quality and they'll rubber stamp it. You, like, you should be expecting in a publisher a clear pathway of how your book is being initially reviewed, accepted, what is the criteria around that. Um, and, and, and that publisher should be able to document for you every step of that process and what are the actual metrics of success of their authors as well. There should be some degree of transparency and openness around their success and what they've done. Um, sort of another mark of a scam is like they're not willing to, to connect you with other authors or people that they've worked with um, or sort of the things that they've accomplished. You know, like I, I'm really excited, you know, for, for me personally about New Degree Press, how, you know, we were ranked on the Inc. 5000 list and how we've had so many National Book Award winners and our authors have gone on to do these really great things. And so you should have a publisher that can help you, um, at, you know, identify those differences. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the, the other big components of the vanity press scams is that they will, they'll make their contracts very convoluted. Yep. And in that, uh, you know, people will always look for the royalties, right? They'll always be like, okay, well, you know, they're only taking a 20% royalty off of this and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but some of the, the, the stories that I've heard about the scammers specifically is that in the contract, they will actually have you sign away some of the distribution rights yep. for your book and you are not aware of it because of how the language is framed as very, very vague and very kind of nebulous. Exactly. Yeah, no, the, la the contract language is so important. It should be accessible. You should be able to ask questions and have reasonable conversations with, um, with your publishing partner, whoever that may be. And there should be an open, honest dialogue. You should go into a publishing agreement with clarity on what every single term within the agreement is. You shouldn't be giving up rights or royalties um, or, or a really interesting one is where, you know, you may own the original rights to, to your work, but if you make any edits to it after the book is published or at certain stages of the publishing journey, you lose the rights to those edited versions of your work. There can be some really weird, complicated things in those contracts. And so it's important that if, if you don't understand it, you can have a conversation with your publisher and they're comfortable having that with you. Um, and also that you should feel comfortable going to a lawyer or seeking legal advice, because that's important that you feel comfortable and confident about your rights, about the royalty stake, about these bigger things beyond just the ROI, the the production values and you know is my book being rubber stamped or not it's really important that you understand your rights and, and and responsibilities as an author as well 
Yeah. And so with that, it's kind of like, you know, is there a time when an author should use a vanity press? Like, I know we touched on, like, you can do it if you're doing X, Y, or Z, but like, should you? Is there a time where you should do a vanity press over any other form of publishing? Yeah, so you should use a vanity press for one of a couple reasons. If you are to ever consider a vanity press, these are honestly some of the biggest reasons. Otherwise, you shouldn't. The first biggest reason is if the ROI investment on the book does not matter to you. If you are willing to spend $1,000 or $10,000 or a million dollars on your book, however much you want to spend or invest in it, time, effort, money, all of those things. If you don't care about the, the, that, that return on investment for you and it doesn't particularly matter, then using a vanity press like a mom and pop publisher or sort of a more local hometown publisher, that's great because they, for, for you, your goals aren't aligned on economics and they can help you do that on a more tight, lean budget because they're a more local solution as opposed to a big, bad vanity scam that we're talking about here. And so in thinking about a vanity press, you should be really thoughtful that if you're going sort of one of the two routes, if you're going down the, this is a family project, this is an heirloom, this is local oral history, I'm writing you know, a book for the local museum, I'm doing things like that. And there are companies that exist specifically for those kinds of projects where the ROI doesn't matter as much. Really, it's just about getting the book bound, printed, a fairly basic cover design. The production qualities don't matter as much. And so, you know, in that, you know, sense of it right there, there can be a very clear, straightforward path. Even then, you should still pay attention to, do you retain the rights to the work? What right. do the royalties look like? All those bigger contractual terms, because they still do matter. Um, but the real reason that you should consider using a vanity press, if you were to do one, is for a more personal project, passion project reason, where the economics of it don't matter and, 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 and shouldn't matter, um, because you're doing it for your family or for your local hometown or things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it, it makes it a lot more, um, I, think it's, I think it makes it a lot more clear, like why you would want to use a vanity yeah. press versus, you know, doing anything else. Cause like, you know, you could, people could make the argument, well, I could self publish. It's like, yeah, you, you totally could. And it'd probably be coming out to roughly the same price, but now you're having to do all that stuff. You know, exactly. and so you're having you're playing the part of editor, publisher, layout designer, cover designer, all that kind. And just in your time, exactly. you know, it's going to get more expensive. Um, so that kind of brings us to the next part, which is, you know, like, what is a, a hybrid publisher? Because um, in most cases, the scammy vanity presses will kind of moonlight as a vanity press and get people that way but so like what does yeah. a what does a legitimate hybrid publisher look like out there in the industry today yeah so a hybrid publisher is one um where similar to vanity presses there is an author subsidy component where you may be responsible for paying or uh, you know, either a portion or the totality of those costs. But the big difference between a vanity scam and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a legitimate hybrid publisher is one where, as a publisher, their economic incentives are clearly aligned to you. Some mm -hmm. hybrid publishers in the space take a royalty stake, and that can be a really valid path where you as the publisher and as you know the you know where they as a publisher you as the author can have a clear subsidy model you're very clear about how the economics work upfront investment and how the royalties are going to be split on the back end um but there's usually a give and take in that sense 
Um, and so there are some hybrid publishers that have royalty stakes and there's an author subsidy. And there are, you know, hybrid publishers like New Degree Press where, you know, we don't take a royalty stake in the book, but there's clear positive ROI economic alignment. For us, most of our authors publish their books through a crowdfunded pre-sale model. And right. we don't want to work with authors um, who can't align to those positive economic incentives where you do a pre-sale before you start revisions or editing or, uh, or the other book production activities, because we want to make sure that your book is going to be a positive ROI investment for you. Um, so that way you can be proud and confident of your book when it publishes and you don't have this $10,000, $30,000 million dollar check that you have to write after the book is out. Um, again, hi hyperbole, um, but you know th th there there are some really expensive hybrid publishers out there. Um, but you should feel like there is a clear economic incentive. Sometimes it's about royalties, but not always. Um, and when it's not about royalties, there should be a clear path for how you, as the author, are either if you're subsidizing it, it's crowdfunded or pre-sale funded, so your like the economics are are there for you. Um, and that you know how you're going to recoup those, those, those investments, both in time and in money. Yeah. And so, like, I know with um, the hybrid publishers, um, there, you know, there's that range, right? It's, it's going to differ widely. Um, yep. But in general, the, the cost, let's say, you know, someone's going to crowdfund, you know, and go and go that route and, and go to try and save some money, you know, so that way, yeah. at least they're fundraising half of the cost. Um, yeah. What is the general cost that you have seen kind of across the hybrid publisher uh, model? Because uh, yeah. again, I know it varies widely, but like just kind of what's that range for, for anybody who's not aware of it? Yeah, so so in, in, in publishing, it us usually you should expect there to be between a seven to $30,000 um, investment in the production and publishing of your book. Um, usually that's around what the economic investment is. Some publishers, it'll be on the higher end where it'll be closer to fifteen to $30,000. Some will be less than that where it'll be, you know, between seven and 12. Um, but usually that's the ballpark range that you should be expecting if you're in the world of hybrid publishing, um, where, where, where it will um, go out to. And again, with those costs, whether it's $7,000 or $30,000, you should be able to clearly see how is that money being allocated in the production value in my book, in, right. in, 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 in the editing and the support. How is this helping me make a substantially better book than if I were to yeah. self-publish or vanity scam publish or go maybe even another route? Sure, yeah. And so that kind of brings it to the the question that, you know, I know that if you have Googled New Degree Press, it'll come up, you know, is New Degree Press a, a vanity press? And that's one of the reasons why I added this as a question on here, because yep. it, it's a commonly asked question. And so what is the difference between New Degree Press and a vanity press? Not necessarily the, the, the scammy ones, but just like a legitimate yep. uh, vanity what is the main differences that are there? Yeah, so I mean, in, ter in terms of New Degree Press, different sort of from vanity, it goes back to those three big things. ROI, production value, um, and, re and really the support that you're getting when you publish the book. In terms of our approach and our process, we have a clear crowdfunded um, pre-sale mechanism that creates that positive economic ROI alignment for your book where you need to do that pre-sale in order to in order to fund your book production costs. So when you publish, every sale after you publish is a profitable book sale. Um, the second big thing is is production values. You know, in terms of having a beautifully designed cover, your book Steven City of Stars is a beautiful, stunning cover. Every book that we've published has a beautiful and stunning cover and some of them you know have won awards and done things like that um, and so there should be clear production values in the cover in the editing 
copy editing, proofreading, layout, marketing support, um, and and also helping like the, the just the the actual sort of you know every every element of the book. So that way, when it's published, um, you can be confident that it is a well published, high quality book. And in thinking about like what what production values are, I think it's worth unpacking that real quick and talking about it through the lens of New Degree Press and our approach. Right. So when we look at deciding, you know, books that we want to publish and, and the support that we provide and, and whether and whether or not to accept a book into publishing or to, or to recommend it, you know, for additional editorial support or other things before, before it's eligible, we really look at three main criteria. One, is the book well structured? Meaning is the actual structure of the writing, does it have a hook at the start of the chapter? If it's genre fiction, does it have conflict and good, you know, protagonist character development? What about the secondary characters? And really looking at the themes and the elements of each individual chapter. So it is a well-structured book. Two, is it well-written? And three, most importantly, is it in the author's voice? You can have a well-structured book. You can have a well-written book. But our big thing is that we care about making sure that the that your book is both well structured and well written in your voice, yeah. which is very different and and honestly, in our view, incredibly important because yeah. we don't want your book to be just like any other book. We want it to be your book. And so to that end, you know, we will. You know, we only accept around 50 to 60 percent of, of, of manuscripts um, through our book writing programs and our different create programs that we offer. Um, and, and usually when we receive an unsolicited manuscript, whether it's through an open call or a referral or another mechanism, usually it's less than 10 to 15 percent of manuscripts that we receive unsolicited. Um, that we recommend or accept into publishing. And the reason for that is because it really goes back to those three things. Is it well structured? Is it well written? And is it in the author's um, voice? And so that's really important in terms of our acceptance and our um, editorial criteria. Um, and so and sort of the other big thing again is, you know, going back to somehow those vanity scams will take away distribution rights and author rights to their work. We believe that the author should retain full ownership of their book. Um, and to that end, we don't have authors sign a first rights, you know, you know, pass on future titles of the book. So if an author, after they publish with us, decides to write another book or create a series or do those other things, they don't have to come to us first. Usually you'll see those similar non-compete style clauses in traditional publishing and right. in vanity scams where you're forced to go to them um, but we really want to create a more you know you know culture of abundance around the creators and the authors that we support and publish that you should own your work you should decide how it's used we want to help you execute on that vision yeah and that that was going to be one of the big things that um you know, I think, and actually, I think we had talked about that in some of the earlier streams um, with uh, Angela and um, Zara on the first one, and then Vincent and I, when we were talking about the, the crowdfunding, is that that's why we ended up choosing for ourselves to go the the hybrid publishing route with our books because we wanted to retain the the distribution rights. We wanted to retain um you know more creative control especially than tr uh, traditional publishing allows um and not having the facility to be able to straight self-publish this was kind of that happy middle ground um which kind of brings it to the next question you know what authors would get the most out of new degree press because you know i've been very open about my book on here during the streams and talking about you know uh, crowdfunding model, hybrid publishing. I love the model, uh, you know, continue to do the model and, you know, cause it just allows for more fun and, and I like that. So, you know, yep. 
for you, you know, because you had mentioned, you know, anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 percent ish for unsolicited manuscripts get accepted. Um, and then, you know, a overall acceptance rate of about 50 to 60 percent. Um, what authors would get the most out of New Degree Press that you that you've seen or, you know, just in kind of in general? Yeah, so so. You know, in terms of this one here, New Degree Press publishes all different kinds of works. We publish memoir style books, genre fiction, uh, poetry, essay collections, you know, you know, nonfiction and business nonfiction works and self-help um, genre. So we publish a variety of different books across genres and types of works. The commonality across all of our authors that we found is really around sort of four key things, four key areas of what of what we like to call and consider modern authorship. So really, you know, when in looking about like what is a modern author and 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 and, and how a modern author um, excels and thrives in our community, really they do four main things. One, they build direct relationships with their readers, their audience. Two, there's a clear emphasis and you know, you know, focus in terms of owning their work. Three, you know, they leverage coaching and expertise of others. And four, they, they, they really care about creating positive economic outcomes from their creation. And so authors that are successful with New Degree Press are ones who, one, really care about having that direct relationship with their readers and their audience. And to that end, a lot of the work that we do in terms of marketing, pre-sale, crowdfunding, support that we give our authors is in coaching and editing feedback and marketing support to help facilitate that through what we call work in progress marketing. And so to that end, an author that's going to succeed and thrive within our community really wants to have that direct relationship with their readers and their audience. And then two, they care about the ownership of their work. How exactly, you know, it, you know who owns the rights to their work? In, in our case, the author should retain full ownership rights to their work and we should help them execute on their vision to do that. Um, and then three, they leverage coaching, expertise and support of others. You know, I often like to say that it takes a, a village to, to, to write and publish a book, but the truth is it takes a community to create and publish a book. And so you should, as an author, be leveraging the coaching, the expertise of mentors, of coaches, of editors, of other people um, who have expertise in these things um, and can give you that additional perspective and insight and can be those advisors for you on your publishing team or a part of your publishing community. Um, and then for you know, authors you know, who care about having that positive economic outcome from their creations, whether it's through the crowdfunded pre-sale or if their goal is to launch a coaching consulting business or to launch multiple books in a series or to become a serial author um, who care about creating those positive economic outcomes. Um, those are the authors who, who, who thrive and, and succeed within our community. So again, it's you know having direct relationship with your audience, owning your work, leveraging coaching and expertise, and then creating positive economic outcomes. And those are the authors that excel within our community and those are the authors that we most want to work with. Yeah, well, and I think just as a, uh, to kind of take on to that, um, it, it's not so much about like, you know, what authors, but it's more of kind of like what comes after uh, the publishing yeah. process. And I, and I think for me, because like at, as a coach, at, you know, working with authors on that side of things with New Degree Press is, it's interesting to me because there is the continuing education aspect of it. You know, there's follow up, you know, six months down the road, a year down the road. And that's not something that as an author who, you know, has been looking at the the broader scope of the publishing industry over the last 16 years since I got interested in publishing my books. <laughs> I've not seen that and I've not heard it from any of my traditionally published friends. Um, I've not, obviously like there's the continuing education with the, uh, the self publishing model because you're constantly having to learn new skills. Um, but it's different because it's not necessarily facilitated in one place for you as a lecture or classroom or, 
um, a, a way to kind of break down these bigger parts. Usually you're going to have to go through multiple different uh, <laughs> videos on, you know, YouTube University to find <laughs> all the information exactly. that you're looking for. And it's, it's consolidated down and, you know, everybody kind of stays up to date, which I think is just really cool. And just as a, as a note of, for anyone else out there, like it's not a, it's not done at publishing. There is exactly. a further follow up um, after that, which I think is uh, super important in maintaining that author community as well. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it, you, you spoke to it right there. It's, it, it, there, there's also this piece of having continued community, continued learning and education, you know, after your book is out, publishing is, is honestly, as I like to often say, it's just the start. There's so much more to being an author and to having a published book or multiple published books than just reaching that milestone of publishing. And yep. so it's authors who are interested in taking that longer term view um, that will also find success um, and, and value in working with you know, a publisher like Media Group Press. Yeah. So as we kind of wrap up here, um, you know, do you have any any final thoughts, you know, based on the conversation that we've talked about with vanity and the scam vanity and different hybrid publishers and new degree press, you know, what are some of the final thoughts and, and any, is there anything exciting that's coming up for uh, new degree press in the future? Yeah. So in terms of exciting things coming up, I'll quickly answer that. And then I'll sort of, you know, close out with some brief reflections here. You know, right now um, we are accepting manuscripts for our September publishing uh, cohort or September publishing community um, through the next uh, two weeks here. And so if you're able to submit your manuscript um, by Friday, March 4th, um, you'll be, you know, considered, you know, eligible for you to potentially join that cohort. Again, you may not join that publishing cohort because we want to make sure before an author starts, they have the support, the context, the community they need to succeed. Um, and, and also that your manuscript is in a place where it's ready to move forward with publishing. Um, and so, you know, you can go to our website, newdegreepress.com you know, forward slash submit, there's a page where you can submit your manuscript um, for submission. I'm sure you'll, you know, you'll, you'll drop it in, you know, the recording and on the comments even and all that. Um, but, you know, you, you can go to our website to submit your manuscript and, and we're happy to do a review. Usually we'll get back to you within two to three weeks of submitting your manuscript um, to give you our decision, whether it's a recommendation for publishing or another path if it needs editorial support. Um, and so if you're looking to do that, you're welcome to. Again, you may not publish in September. We have publishing cohorts throughout the year. So your next, you know, the next release window after that would be in your sort of December end of this year, or early January of early next um, would be the next cohort after. Um, but taking a step back from this one, um, when you're thinking, when you walk away from this conversation and, and, this, and, 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 and sort of this live here, you know, this, the, the challenge that I would give to you as an author deciding to publish your book and, and really discerning how you want to publish your book is to do a is, is to do a couple of things and, and the first thing is to you know if you don't have one buy a drill and a pen and write it and there are a couple of things that you should write in that journal or on that pad of paper before you make a decision about how where why you publish your book and the first question you should ask yourself is why exactly are you publishing this book? Is it a personal project? Is it for your family? Is it a local hometown hero story? Is it because you want to sell 10 million copies and become a New York Times bestselling author like Rick Riordan or J.K. Rowling or Neil Gaiman? Like what is, what for you defines a success in publishing this book? And a good answer is saying that I just want to publish a book and say that I'm a Polish author. That is an admirable goal. Um, but you should be really clear and crisp for yourself, one, like, what exactly is your metric for success? And then two, you know, what aspects of publishing a book matter to you? Do you care about the ROI um, of publishing your book? Do you care about the rights ownership and the royalties? Do you care about production values? What are the things about the process of publishing a book itself matter to you, you or don't matter to you? Um, and then three, 
um, sort of the, the, the last thing here to, to sort of reflect on and will help you discern a clear path forward is, is, you know, as you're thinking about your goals and as you're thinking about the process and the journey you want to go on, um, what would really sort of, you know, as you look at this, do you want to publish this book in the next year? Do you want to publish the book in the next 90 days? Do you want to publish the book in the next five years? On what horizon does it matter to you to publish a book? I've worked with authors before in, in the Foxhole Trenches where I've published a book in under 30 days. It's brutal, it's not fun, but it can be done and it's possible. Um, but usually it takes between six and 12 months to really produce a high quality book that you're proud of. And so for you, you should think about the time horizon that you wanna do this one. And is there an urgency for you to do this one now or later? And again, there's no right or wrong answer, but life happens, it gets in the way, and you should have realistic expectations for yourself of when you wanna do this and how, how much timeline matters to you. Um, and so again, like thinking about, you know, what are your goals? What, what is the experience, the journey that you wanna be on? How much do those decisions matter to you? And then three, over what horizon you wanna do it? If you can answer those three clear questions for yourself, you know, you can then begin to figure out, you know, some, some of the bigger, more important things of building your audience, creating your launch and publishing community, connecting with other authors and, and finding your home um, for success when you publish your book. Yeah, so good. And I think, you know, when it comes to uh, my closing thoughts to kind of echo off of what you were saying, you know, I had, you know, at gosh, at, at the point when I was submitting to NDP had like 14 years of what do I want to do with this book <laughs> that I had basically asked myself that uh, those same kind of sets of questions. And, you know, traditionally published wasn't for me because I didn't want to lose a lot of the creative control to my book. You know, it was very near and dear to my heart. Uh, didn't have the financial means to be able to just straight self-publish. And so, you know, I was kind of just stuck. And um, finding New Degree Press as an option and seeing the crowdfunding model was very, very interesting to me because, you know, based on my author goals, it aligned, you know, with what I wanted to do. I retained the distribution. I retained the royalties. Perfect. Like all of that is good. So, you know, like as you guys are thinking about what you want to do for publishing, really digest what is important to you. You know, um, for me, royalties are important because I'd like to get paid for my hard work. You know, <laughs> I would like yeah. to not make 10% of what I put into it. Um, I'd rather own all of it and have to work harder to kind of get the book out there. That's, you know, my frame of view for others. They're like, I want to do traditional publishing, go for that. Like, but commit to it. That's the thing yeah. is like, if you want to do that, don't dance around it, actively make a goal to say, okay, I'm going to finish this draft. I'm going to spruce it up a bit. And then I'm going to start querying agents. Or if you're like, hey, I want to go the self-publishing route because that just makes sense for me. Perfect. Plan for it and commit to it. Don't go the route that's easy, which is like, well, you can publish for free. You can, but we all know what those books look like on Amazon because we can spot them from you know four or five pages away. Yep. So invest in and save up for self-publishing knowing that you know like uh we talked with angela on um the the first publishing stream and she has gotten to a place it wasn't initially but she has gotten to a place where she's spending about a thousand dollars to self-publish each book and she's built relationships with the editors and other stuff to be able to facilitate that but she admittedly said that i paid way more when I started because I wanted to invest more and then learn things myself and then I can kind of bring it in a little bit. So uh, 
if you the if the crowdfunding model that's part of this you know hybrid publishing you know kind of culture i would say um is appealing to you do some research on it there's lots of authors doing the crowdsourcing slash you know hybrid publisher model they may not all not all hybrid publishers do crowdfunding um, but you will see that you know ndp does that through indiegogo and providing the templates and stuff and the outreach language so that way you're not having to try to reinvent the wheel is super super helpful so if you guys are trying to figure out and you're, and you're not sure where your book is at take a chance and submit you know that's what i did i was just like I, this may this may completely blow up in my face who knows <laughs> you know? but yeah. take a flyer and and submit in the next couple of weeks and see what they say because they might send it back and be like hey it's not quite ready yet but here's what you may want to look into here's maybe what you want to work on for the book yeah and if you don't have any advice that's some advice <laughs> you know uh so i hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this conversation and thank you brian for joining us and talking with us tonight about this i think it's a of course it's such a interesting topic because it's i'd say volatile um because it just it depends on who you're talking to right and so yeah. uh, i appreciate you coming and clarifying the differences between some of the vanity presses the the reasons why we should use them the instances we should how to avoid the scams uh, a little bit about hybrid publishing in general and then about what ndp does um and guys if you have any other questions you know our emails to reach us are down in the comments below. So if you want to know more, like we're happy to kind of talk with you and uh, fill you in on a little bit more of that. If you have other questions that you just want to drop them in the chat or uh, not the chat, the, the comments, do that too. Um, we're always available to respond and reply back to you guys when you have those questions because we want to make sure that we're meeting you guys where you're at and helping you along your author journey and giving you the best content that we possibly can to help you make those educated decisions for your publishing journey so guys thank you so so much and i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night and thank you again brian for joining us uh for this live stream absolutely thank you for having me Stephen. all right take care everybody have a good night